This video is singularly powered by this donut and this whole thing of coffee. Sometimes I feel like wrap-up videos are some of my least favorite to make because of how much production it takes to film them and like remember what I thought about all the books. And then do I do them justice once I wrap them up? Probably not. I have a stack of books to talk to you about. All the things that I read at the beginning of August. I told myself that this month I will not wait until after August is finished to wrap up because it's a process to wrap up more than 10 books and I already have 10 to talk to you about. Anyway, thank you for joining. Let's start with the first book that I read and then up to what I just finished today. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and this is a really hyped 2020 release um, that I was quite excited about. Uh, I've had a lot of friends that have liked their experience with this and for me it was kind of between two and a half and three stars. I was really intrigued by the main character and like the setup of the story of it's kind of like a mystery of figuring out what is going on with her cousin as she goes to this mansion with her cousin's husband's family and trying to decipher what it is that's happening in this house. I thought also the main character was very interesting in how she took like her studies and her hobbies and her interests and pushed that to show this family her thoughts about eugenics and race in general so I really enjoyed her kind of fieriness and the spunk to her personality but the writing was really exposition heavy it was a lot more focused on moving the plot and understanding what's happening in this house and less about staying with the characters and even understanding her cousin. Her cousin really didn't take much part in the book and I thought that she would. It's got spooky parts. For the most part it's more creepy than it is spooky or scary so if you like creepy and gross in your horror books then I would totally recommend this. Not one that I would suggest you read as you're eating and I didn't really enjoy. There's like a small romance plot that I didn't care for. Again the cousin's not really a part of the story and I thought that they would be. I just think that the ending, how it all wrapped up and the writing didn't work for me all the way through. I'm curious to see what everybody else has been thinking about this 2020 release. For the most part, everyone that I watch has really enjoyed it, so I feel kind of indifferent about it and more ambivalent about it. After I finished um, Mexican Gothic, I read In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Look at me back to back Latinx women writers. So this is my second attempt at reading a Carmen Maria Machado book. I did try to read her short story collection and I liked some of the stories in it, um, but by the time I got to the really long one in the middle, the SVU story, I completely tapped out of the book and I just was done with it. So I've never gone back to that book and I told myself that I would give Carmen Maria Machado another chance because I do enjoy her writing. I just think sometimes a lot of her meta and literary stuff kind of goes over my head, especially if you've never watched SVU. There's no connection there for you to make. So this one still goes that literary route and I just think that that's her style. She's very experimental in her writing. I thought that this book though took all of those literary themes that she really likes to use to analyze life and she used that inward and made this about her own experience. This focuses on an abusive relationship that she suffered through um, with a queer partner and I found this memoir to be really really moving. It was really imaginative, it was really clever, it was really thoughtful. I really liked how every chapter was kind of like a different way to view this relationship while at the same time guiding you from kind of the beginning to the middle to the end of the relationship in a linear sense. I had a lot of emotional responses to this book and I think that's going to be easy for anyone who, you know, <laughs> has any emotions period to see her suffer through this relationship that is obviously not good for her. I definitely saw myself in her friends and her friends kind of telling her to get out. Those friends perspectives, I've been there. I thought that this was beautiful. I really found parts in this that I loved and I read out loud to my partner and that's also something that I find that I really like in books when something is so poignant that I have to be like stop I just have to let it out into the world um, that tells me that it's a really great book 
so I love this and I gave it four and a half stars. The book that I read after that was a graphic novel. I kind of went on a graphic novel run after In the Dream House. The first one that I read was the new release of Fence and this was really exciting that it was coming because it felt like a surprise. There's been talk that there's going to be a young adult novelization happening and I'm not like super excited about that. I wanted more Fence graphic novels and then apparently this happened like that. I love this series. It's the only series that I actively keep up with and I want to read the next volume. I've tried many series that I've fallen off the wagon really quickly, like I'll read three volumes and I'm done. This series I am not done with and I just wish there were more. I love the relationships between the characters so much. I love the banter and the dialogue. I think that is what's the best out of this. It's so top-notch. It feels effortless and I love just seeing the characters talking to each other. Because of the way that it is illustrated, I feel like the reader always knows the emotions and the feelings that the characters are going through and to us they seem like they're wearing all of these emotions on their sleeves but to the characters all around them they don't see that and so that's where you get a lot of the slow burn romances that are kind of building up if you haven't read fence i definitely recommend it and you'll feel happy it's actually a super light-hearted series that always makes me happy when i'm done reading each volume the next book that i read after that is not a happy one um it's a graphic memoir that's called grass it is a graphic memoir it's actually a translated graphic memoir which i didn't know when i was reading it it was translated by janet hong it's by kim suk jendry kim and she's from south korea this seems like it was kind of done like a project that she had to do for school and for cartoon tuning and then it kind of grew from there into this huge volume that traces the life of Lee Ok Soon who was a very very young girl. She had a really hard life growing up. When she was running an errand she got pulled by these men who ended up working for the military and they basically forced her to be a comfort woman, which is what they called it, to Japanese military workers. So people who were fighting during World War II would then come to these houses to be comforted by these women sexually against their will. They suffered a lot in these houses, including you know unwanted pregnancies and venereal disease and even death. The illustrator and writer is interviewing Lee Ok Soon about her experiences. It is harrowing to read this and it was definitely educational for me as someone who had never heard about this and I would definitely recommend it just for those parts. I would also really recommend it because of the illustration style. It is really beautiful the way that the illustrator uh, combines these really harrowing tales with this nature background, trees, the outside. So she's really showing you what she went through by showing you the vastness of this world that she couldn't escape. There's like literally nothing around her that she could escape to, but also not glorifying or showing you the violence and instead showing you these beautiful pastoral scenes. After I was done, I was like Googling what is going on with this. They're still trying to make a case to the Japanese government and they have acknowledged that this happened but they haven't formally apologized um, and instead they've tried to just pay them out and give them money. Really beautiful, really hard to read obviously but definitely one that I recommend um, especially if you enjoy graphic memoirs. I ended up giving Grass four stars. The next that I have to talk about is Alice from Dream to Dream. I don't have that much to say about it because I thought it was just okay and I only gave it two stars. I really like the art. I really like the coloring in the art as well and I actually enjoyed the fact that the main character had a power. I know that I mentioned in my TBR that I don't really love fantasy graphic novels um, that lean on powers like that, but I really liked how the power was described here. I thought that what this book really needed was a little bit more context between the characters, the relationship that were pre-existing before the reader came in. She's best friends with a guy and I feel like there's not really context for us to understand and know that relationship that well. And I also didn't like how the relationship between the main character and a bully in her school were really described to us. Again, felt like it needed more context and to be a little bit more subtle in how it depicts kind of that victim bully relationship. Uh, it was a little bit cliche and dull, I think. I liked the idea of this graphic novel, but I didn't really enjoy the execution of it. 
from here on out I have copies of all of them. The next one that I read after that was Is Rape a Crime? This is a memoir and an investigation and a manifesto by Michelle Bowdler. So in this book Michelle Bowdler looks at it inward through a rape that she suffered um, by two men in the 1980s and what that has meant to her life. Then she also kind of focuses on the investigation of like looking at what happened with her case. And then finally it's a manifesto and looking more at the system as a whole and kind of pointing her finger at some real failures of investigating crime. And that's her question there, is rape a crime? Do we take rape so seriously that we actually investigate it as it should be investigated on par with a murder? So through the memoir part, we learn about how this changed the trajectory of her life. We learn about what it was like meeting her partner and having to express what happened to her to her partner and also to her children. What this means to a woman's professional career, kind of all of the lingering effects of the rape. I love the investigation aspect of it because she traces back her case. She looks at the documents that the police were taking. She looks at newspapers accounts of what was what was happening because this was a string of rapes that happened in her neighborhood what her relationship was like with the police officer that was investigating her rape and spoiler alert it wasn't great i wanted to read one part that talks about the chronic understaffing that happens with these types of cases so the new york city's department of investigation looked at their own police department and saw that in 2018 there were 67 investigators for more than 5,000 adult sex crime cases compared to 100 homicide detectives that handled less than 300 murders a year so you can see the disparity there and like what people actually think is important to investigate. So I thought it was pretty damning. I did enjoy this book and I give it four stars. The next book that I read after that was Black Boy by Richard Wright. I was really excited to finally get to this classic that was originally published in the 1940s. It follows Richard Wright taking stuff from his childhood but also other people in his childhood and kind of making this novel autobiography hybrid where he discusses a black boy's life. He grew up very poor in a family that was very religious and anti even reading in ways you would say anti-education. It also talks about his father leaving and the really bad hand that his mom was dealt and then living with other family members including his grandmother and uncle. It talks a lot of, of course about the relationship between blacks and whites during this time in the 1910s into the 1930s. What I love the most about this book is how Richard Wright writes about these everyday situations that he faced or lived through with the knowledge really of what he knows as an adult writing this. I would say that the narrator of the audiobook did an amazing job at this to relay those moments that had you know they had drama to them they had comedy to them it really came alive for me to see this life from the 1910s and to connect with this boy and what he was going through so i really enjoyed the writing one word that i would use to describe this writing is very confident one thing i would say that i didn't love as much about this book is kind of the last 30 percent of it it really starts to flip over to his involvement with the communist party issues that he had with the communist party and that just wasn't as interesting to me as it was to see him from very early on in age into his teens and 20s but definitely a classic that I would recommend everyone read it was really really fascinating and I'm glad that I finally got to it I ended up giving this four stars all right after that I read a mind spread out on the ground but the cover is more beautiful than this copy from the University of Wyoming so I will just put the cover here for you. This is a collection of essays. Alicia Elliott is a indigenous woman that grew up in Canada in the Six Nations of the Grand River Reserve and she also makes time in the United States as well. She lived in Ohio part-time so she talks in some essays about poverty and she talks about living on a reservation. She talks about nutrition and health, about mental health, especially with her mother, about some sexual assault. So she definitely looks at really weighty topics, but she always, um, in a way, makes them personal. I'll tell you some of my favorite essays and why I love them so. I really enjoyed Dark Matters, which is comparing scientific dark matter, like dark matter in the universe, to some extrajudicial and unjust murders of an indigenous man and two missing and murdered indigenous girls and women. I also really loved 34 grams per dose which looks at the convergence of government entities and 
you know, the policies that they put in place having to do with food and farming and what that means to health and nutrition of a population. And she really nails it on the head and basically says, like, U.S. farmers are the reason why fast food is so cheap because the government subsidizes it. I also loved Scratch, which was about head lice that she and her family members suffered um, as she was growing up and how that connects to the poverty that she was living in. also loved Unforbidden Rooms and Intentional Forgetting, which was about her sexual assault. And she kind of flips it a different way and instead of saying, you know, that she wants to speak out about her rape, even though she is in this essay, she's kind of saying that she wants to be quiet about her rape and that is her way of healing. And it was just a, an interesting way of flipping the conversation and seeing it in a different way. I would totally recommend that you read this if you're a Canadian, if you're not Canadian, because I think she the topics that she talks about are things that affect us all and especially if you're a US person I feel like there's plenty for you to get from this. Truly love this collection. This is making me want to pick up more essay collections and I don't think I've really read many essay collections um, that were more sociopolitical in nature. So really love this and I gave it four and a half stars. The next thing that I finished penultimate thing that I finished is Memorial Drive by Natasha Trethaway. This is a daughter's memoir, so it looks into um, Natasha Trethaway's mother's death at the hands of uh, an abusive husband and was her stepfather for some time through this process of grief, um, as well as looking into the actual evidence that her mother left behind, you know, writings that she left, and also tape recordings that she did to show the police the abuse that she was suffering at the hands of this man. I don't want to talk that much about this because I don't have that many thoughts other than I like this for what it was. I kind of felt that there was more to unpack here through the beginning part of it. I really felt like as a reader I was dropped into it without any context and I was kind of confused and then I started caring maybe through the 40% mark as I was getting to know the author and her mother. There's parts of this where she mentions things offhand that I kind of wish she looked into more. She says she could have saved her when she talks about her mother and her dealing with the police, but then kind of leaves the comment at that and doesn't really investigate that further. There's chapters, full chapters of stuff in here that is just taken verbatim from her mother's writings and from phone recordings. And as you can tell, it's only a 200 page book. And I felt like there was just a little bit more to explore. It always feels weird to read something like this from an enjoyment level and from understanding the author, I gave this three stars. I was a little bit conflicted by this one and I just wish there was a little bit more meat to it. All right, last but not least, I just finished today <laughs> The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Don't know if I've completely like put all of my thoughts together, but I'm just gonna roll with it. This is a off the cuff reaction to this book. I did enjoy this and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. This was a very family focused story, very character focused story, so if those things appeal to you I would definitely recommend it. What I found most interesting about this story was seeing how these lives unspooled over time. Throughout the whole book we kind of flip through time. We go from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s and you kind of see where people are at. I really like that experience of trying to catch up and trying to kind of connect things together. I also really enjoyed the characters. There's definitely some that I liked learning more about than others. I definitely think Jude was my favorite aspect of this book and definitely wouldn't have minded more of her. I think the idea of this is fascinating and it makes me definitely want to pick up Passing by Nella Larson, which I haven't read since I'm on my way to reading classic, you know, black literature, I think I definitely should read that one as well. One thing that I came to love about this was how each of the main character's daughters ended up acting and having personality types that kind of went with their aunt. I'm not going to go into more than that because obviously I feel like there's a lot here that is better left unsaid, but if you're interested in this book, definitely go pick it up. Um, one of those 2020 releases that I do think has lived up for the most part, to my expectations of it. Thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these, let me know in the comments, or if you're interested in reading any of these, let me know, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.